Hi, this is John Kanellopoulos here from our center in Athens, Greece. Let's go and study a little bit a uh, keratoconus patient that we've treated in 2010 with our signature Athens protocol. We saw him today. This gentleman now is uh, in his early 20s. He was a student back then. You can tell which eye had the cross-linking. We see the uh, classic cross-linking lines, the ground glass appearance. His other eye also has keratoconus and um, um, we'll see some of the storyline here, uh, starting with the eye that we treated. This is that gentleman in 2010, uh, in November, right prior to his procedure, we can see uh, clearly the cone here, and we can see him in 2015 with a dramatic improvement of the keratoconus. So not only we can talk about um, disease stabilization, steepest key here is 58, and um, uh, five years almost later, 48. So we have a flattening of about 10 diopters at the peak of the cone. Topographically, we can see how more symmetrically the cornea has begun. Jumping in 2017, two years later here, roughly, the cornea is about the same, 48.4. So no dramatic difference. And all of a sudden, he leaves his uh, teenage years and four years later, we see a dramatic extra flattening of four diopters. Uh, so we go to, from 44.8 to 44.9. And this flattening is not only at the area of the cone, but also in the superior uh, astigmatic area. And yes, you guessed it, this patient now is slightly hyperopic. He's a plus six, minus two and a half. Um, and his uh, uncorrected visual acuity is uh, 20 40, but he's still 21. He has some difficulty at near. His corrective with spectacle visual acuity is almost 2020. This is the difference map showing the today subtracted from the pre-op, and we can see the dramatic uh, flattening that has been achieved through the years. And we reported similar cases to this in our 10 year data that we presented at the American Academy and the ACRS in the European meeting, and it has been now been in print for almost two years. 15 diopter flattening with our combined topography guided partial and refraction uh, normalization of the cornea and higher fluence cross linking. And this is one of the exception cases where significant overcorrection has been achieved. Uh, but sure enough, let's go and look at the other eye because the other eye is a success story as far as uh, stability. And fortunately, uh, even as a kid back then, he stopped rubbing his eye. Significant cone here in the left eye as well. And it remains stable, 52 peak of the cone in the left eye in 2010, 52.7, 2015, 52.1. We see regression of almost half a diopter. This could be noise within the Pentacam maps, but it's probably him stopping to rub in 52.6 now. We're over 11 years later uh, showing stability with just cessation of eye rubbing. So the cone has been stable in the left eye, but we... Uh, discussed with his young gentleman the fact that he may uh, have, uh, he's by the way, 2020 minus in that I am corrected. He may have future problems with um, quality of vision as he grows older. Fundus in the uh, uh, right eye is impeccable, left eye also impeccable with uh, our favorite uh, broad uh, view uh, optos. And if we look at the uh, maps today, uh, we can see that uh, the thickness uh, required for a hyperopic treatment here is excellent. Uh, although the center of the cornea is measured to be 272 with appendicum, this is not accurate. It's more accurate by anterior segment OCT, and we'll see some images of that later. The uh, mid periphery of the cornea is over 600 microns where a hyperopic uh, astigmatic correction will take place. Thus, we do have room to improve this patient, and we have done this in several cases similar in the past. Um, the one thing that I like to, to show you is how this patient has normalized. We've gone from an IHD of uh, uh, 84 to an IHD of uh, 38, and from an ISV of 116 to an ISV of uh, 70 and from a keratoconus of stage three to keratoconus stage two. But I think the numbers here tell a better story. Steepest uh, 61.4 in 2010 and now 44.2. So we're talking about close to a 20 diopter flattening of his cornea with our combined Athens protocol. Of course, 
one has to be prepared. Remember back then we only treated one diopter myopia and about two diopters of astigmatism with our topo guided, the uh, EX500 eczema laser with a wave light uh, outcom platform. Uh, the uh, difference map being so dramatic as we saw here is the synergy between the cross thinking and the higher, uh, of, with higher affluence rather, and the um, um, topography guided ablation enabling the uh, cornea to um, uh, cross think uh, more brisker. And again, his pre-op, his post-op in the difference map seen here uh, with plus, uh, with sign fluke uh, tomography. Let's go look at the pachymetry maps and how we evaluate uh, the cornea thickness that we can see is dramatically uh, thicker. His corneas are 380, 367 with the anterior segment OCT. This is the OptiView Avanti. And we see impeccable uh, epithelial maps for a keratoconic eye that has been cross-linked. Another sign that we've described as a stabilization sign for keratoconus. And again, showing the discrepancy between the anterior segment OCT pachymetry maps, 370 roughly, and the numbers that we saw on the Pentacam, uh, 272. So don't be scared if you see these numbers. The Pentacam, uh, fortunately, is biased by the significant uh, noise that's being produced by the cross-linking within the cornea. And we will sure plan. We tried a plus a two and a half contact lens. He became uncorrected uh, 2025. And in this young, young gentleman, we're gonna plan a topography guided, uh, uh, actually away from optimized uh, ablation for his hyperopic astigmatism in order to normalize and make steeper the central cornea and be able to treat the uh, overcorrection achieved with this dramatic shift and refractive power of the cornea, but nevertheless, secure stabilization of the uh, uh, progressive uh, keratoconic uh, process. Um, at last, I'm gonna, uh, and you know I'm gonna do this, we're gonna go and look at the cross-linking line. We're cross-linked at least 70-80% uh, of cornea depth and at a very wide spectrum. This is a nine millimeter map on the uh, Vanti uh, OptiView device showing the um, dramatic efficacy of uh, cross-linking with the Athens protocol in depth and width. And this is the proof uh, in the pudding. So thanks so much for uh, traveling with me and evaluating this very interesting young patient. Uh, fortunately, his left eye has been stable. I think uh, cessation of eye rubbing and monitoring even his sleep habits. He used to sleep face down um, with uh, on his knuckles has helped for his left eye not to progress, we were able to certainly avoid a cornea transplant in a young patient um, a, uh, in his early teenage years back in 2011. And now um, his overcorrection refractive eyes on the cornea from uh, the excessive uh, efficacy of the cross thinking is very easy to overcome with a hyperopic correction that will be uh, performed in the thicker mid periphery of the cornea. You can see here with anterior segment OCT, this thickness is at least 550 microns and more. This is John Kenalopoulos from our center in Athens, Greece, signing out. Thanks so much for your attention.